Hello everyone, this is Teresa Benson, Product Marketing Manager here at Red Lion Controls, and today we're going to work with data tags in Crimson 3.1. So in our first episode, we created three data tags. We have a numeric tag, which can be an integer or a floating point. We have a flag tag, which is typically a two-state uh, thing on off, uh, either or, true, false, and then we have a string tag. So let's go ahead and uh, look at the editing pane for what's in the navigation pane. I've clicked on the numeric tag and we can see that there's several different things to choose from up here. In a later episode we'll get into all the different types of alarms we can do. Um, but look at how this changes if I go to a flag tag. You still have a lot of the same things, but as an example, in a two-state environment, you get an on color and an off color. Um, with string tags, you have less tabs. So it all depends on what you are navigating on the navigation pane as to what will be available in the editing pane. Let's look at this data tag. We have a numeric data tag, tag one, and the source in this case is internal. Now if we had devices connected up to this, which we will in future episodes, maybe we have one of our Entron switches, which has a lot of rich data in the form of NView packets, and we want to get some of that information and take action based on it. Um, we would see those devices listed down here in the source area. So we have internal, general, where we can make uh, very basic statements, like maybe uh, a sum uh, tag is the sum of two other tag values. Uh, so let's get into that now. All right, I've got this first tag. Let's go ahead and rename it. You can hit F2 which will allow you to edit it. We can also right click and rename. So I'm gonna hit F2. I'm a big fan of using the keyboard as much as possible. Let's call this uh, integer one. Now I can copy and paste this and we'll make another one. So control C, control V, uh, we'll copy and paste. I am going to rename this one integer, to, integer two. And then let's have a sum. So I copied and pasted again. And in this case, let's make sum the sum of integer one and integer two. So integer one plus integer two. It's that simple. All right, let's have this tag be a light switch. So why not rename it light? Uh, and for me, when working with true, false, on, off tags, uh, a lot of times I like to put the state that is uh, true as part of the name. So light on uh, would be what happens when this value is true. And then this we'll call our hello string tag. All right, so that's how uh, data tags work. Let's do something with these data tags. So I'm gonna come in here, I've uh, clicked on display pages, and I want a little bit more room for editing on this screen. So I am going to actually X out of the navigation pane. It's still available to me at any time right here. I am then gonna select everything that's on the screen. I'm gonna go ahead and delete all of that. I'm going to uh, drag integer one onto the screen. Go ahead and X out of that so we get more room. I'm gonna zoom in so that I can see it a little bit better. These handles allow me to size things, but you notice the font isn't changing, just the space that integer one occupies. I'm gonna drag integer two over now let's say I want them to be the same size. I can right click and choose same size as and click on integer one. Now they're the same size and if I want to align them, I can align with the left and there we go. And then let's say sum. And I want the same thing for that. All right, now let's make these data entry tags so that uh, on the HMI a user could press this and enter a number and then press this, enter a number, and see a result. So I'm going to go ahead and 
you'll notice this blue uh, rectangle appears. If I click once, this menu will open up and I can choose this for data entry. There's always a million ways to do this within Crimson, so I'm going to show you another way. We can right click and choose properties. And right here on the very first tab, uh, it says operation display only. You can choose data entry and choose OK. The last way you can get to that properties thing without right clicking and using your mouse is Alt Enter. Alt Enter does the same thing. All right, so we've got integer one, integer two, and sum. Let's go ahead and send that to our database. But before we do, go to link, options, and I'm gonna change from USB to TCP IP. Remember, we set the IP address for download in the communications area, and we can check that. So let's go back, go to communications, and I'm gonna put a pin in this. And if I come over here, download is pointing to auto Ethernet 1. If I look at Ethernet 1, it's 1 1.20. All right, let's go ahead and send this uh, database down and go to our web browser. Here it is. Now, remember I talked about that uh, local web address that we can use as well. So I can do HTTP uh, web example dot local. That will take us to the same place, so I'm going to go ahead and go to Remote View. All right, and we made these data entry variables, so I'm going to put in 50. And look how sum changed, because sum is the sum of integer 1 and integer 2. If I do 21, 50 plus 21 is 71. There you go. That's how data tags work. In our next episode, we'll get into some more details, and uh, I'll show you even more that you can do with data tags.